This is a video showing how to install a Cortex into the plane. This plane I've already flown, I've verified everything trims out, everything flies the way it should. You don't have to do it this way, especially for those that are using the satellite instead of the wire loom. You could throw the Cortex into a plane. Just make sure you fly it in the off mode first, trim everything out, figure out your CG before you start playing with the Cortex on. Because once the Cortex turns on, it could mask some trim issues or CG issues. I'm using the wire loom because I'm not using a satellite receiver or S bus. So I'm going to plug the wire loom into the plug bank on the right. When mounting the Cortex, the thing we need to be careful of is we need to make sure that the plug bank, this is the plug bank, faces towards the forward part of the plane and is facing up. You can mount the Cortex in other positions. If you do so, you need to plug it up into the software and you need to teach it in the software which position that it's facing so the Cortex understands which axis has changed. Super nice thing about the Cortex is you don't have to worry necessarily about what plugs what plugs into these ports. It's not like port 1 has to be ailerons, port 2 has to be rudder, or port 3 has to be elevator. The only thing that's important about the Cortex when you're plugging in the servos is that the servo that I unplug here I, and I plug the cable in, I plug that servo into the corresponding port on the Cortex. So I'm going to start here for example. This one is my BEC input and then this is my throttle input. So I'm not going to touch either one of those. So after my BEC and my throttle, this next one here is my right aileron. Or it should be my elevator, sorry. Well, on the AR6000, it is my right aileron. So, when plugging up the Cortex, you see how these two leads are full servo leads. They have power and ground and signal. These are the leads that will get power to the Cortex from the receiver and also provide power to your servos. The rest of these are just signal wires. You have yellow, orange, green, and gray. In a four channel application where you have two ailerons, servos, one rudder, and one elevator servo, you have one left over that you're not going to use. It's going to be the green one because the green one is the last one, the last bank port right here, port E. This gray one needs to be plugged into the channel that will control the Cortex flight mode. So on a six channel receiver like Spectrum, that would be the gear channel. But okay, back to that. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna take the very first one, which is port A, first one on the plug bank here, port A. And I'm gonna plug this into that right aileron servo port that I just unplugged. So that's in. I'm going to take my right aileron servo extension because I take the wings off of this plane and plug it into the Cortex. When plugging wires into the Cortex, your signal wire, whether it be orange, white, or yellow, will always face towards this picture on the Cortex. We go to the very first bank, which is A plug that in. Going down the line, the next servo that I unplug for my receiver is going to be this one here. And this is my elevator servo. This is my elevator servo. This is input B going to put it to my elevator servo port, plug it in, and then we're going to take the servo that I just unplugged from the receiver and plug it into the Cortex.
Again, it really doesn't matter what you you plug into the Cortex. The most important thing is that whatever port on the receiver that you unplugged the servo from and that you're plugging in a Cortex cable, you plug that servo into the matching open port on the Cortex. So if I unplug servo 1 and plug in my input A, I need to make sure if that servo 1, that servo that came out of port 1, goes into port A on the Cortex. It's just a one for one swap. So down the line, this next one is my rudder servo. And here is where we're going to start using the signal wires only to have the color. The signal wire only that has color. So the next signal wire that we go down the line that will match up with port C is the orange one. And here's the instruct quick start sheet to show you that the next one down the line is the orange cable, which is C. And this would correspond to the port next to the servo I plugged in previously. So since I just unplugged my rudder, let me plug the orange cable into my rudder. There's the orange cable plugged into the rudder. Here's my rudder server that I just unplugged. Going right down the line, the next port. Right there. Here's kind of an illustration of what I was talking about. You have input A, B, C, D, and E, and then the ports correspond A, B, C, D, and E. So, again, whatever servo you unplug and you plug A into that port, that servo must come into the cortex in port A. This is my last one here, my left aileron. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my gray wire because I know this open port here that was here is my gear channel. It's easier to plug it instead of having it plugged in and then trying to fit a plug in there later. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my gray input wire, the auxiliary wire, as the quick start sheet calls it, and plug it in now into my gear channel since I know that this is where I'm going to need to plug it in to control the cortex mode. So going down the line, the next color is going to be D, yellow. I'm going to take the D yellow wire and we're going to put it into the port that I just unplugged my left aileron from. As we can see, it already is a little tight, even though it's on the end, not between two servo plugs. And there we go. So now this will go into the port right next to the one I last best plugged in, which was my rudder. Okay, and as you can see, I do have one port open still. This is for planes that use maybe two elevator servos or two rudder servos. The Cortex can control up to five servos. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to program the Cortex for the very first time. Okay, to program the Cortex is pretty simple. You're gonna need the programming plug. Otherwise, 
looks like a bind plug same thing as a bind plug so I'm just gonna use the bind plug from my radio and you're gonna plug it into the farthest right port it will still be open here even after you plug in the wire loom and plug that in there hard to do in a tight fuse like this especially if you have really really big hands okay there's the programming plug plugged in make sure I move these wires out of the way so you can see what the LEDs are doing we'll tidy these you tidy these up later uh, you can zip tie them but the most important thing is if you do tidy this all up and you do zip tie everything together don't apply zip ties in such a way that it causes tension because you don't want the bundle of wires all nice and tight and neat and it actually is like tense like it's actually like pulling on the cortex because the act of that if you're applying tension where it can pull on the cortex that will cause the cortex to move under load and if the cortex moves under load it'll think that it is moving on the plane and try to correct even though it's not really an issue with wind more just an issue with tension on the servo leads So I'm going to cover this really quick before I power this on because it happens rather quickly. You're going to first power on the Cortex with the bind port plug plugged in. The LED is going to flash red twice. You need to make sure that your sticks are in center and neutral. Then it's going to flash green twice and then we're going to push the aileron to the right and hold. Then it's going to flash green once. Then that means aileron left and hold. Flash green twice. Ele release the aileron. You're going to take the elevator push otherwise known as give the airplane down input and hold it'll flash green once release pull the elevator or up elevator input and hold flash green twice hold the, let go of the elevator rudder to the uh, left and hold and then it's going to flash green one or green once and then you can go rudder sorry that last step after the green twice is rudder right and hold and then flash once rudder left and hold and then it'll start flashing very quickly and then that's when you release everything to neutral pull the jumper then power off the cortex so get this here on video and show you what it looks like radio is on I have my high rate switch flipped all the way to the highest rates which is full deflection this is another important thing when programming the cortex you need to make sure you teach the cortex the max extension of your servo throws you don't want to have it in low rates and then teach it um, only a portion of your servo throws because then the cortex will believe it can only drive the servo so far while trying to correct so flight mode one flight mode three highest rates radios on sticks are all neutral ready to go i'm going to power on and we're going to pay attention here to the color of the led oh, i didn't like my programming port i went too fast it went too fast there I wasn't ready. I already double flashed the green. So again, perfect example of why you need to be ready. So power on. Elevator full right or aileron full right. 
aileron full left. Push on the elevator, down, pull on the elevator, or up. Rudder full right. Rudder full left. Now it's flashing quickly, I can let it go. Again, important thing to remember, we need to pull the blind plug or programming plug before powering off the Cortex. So we're gonna pull that and we'll power off the Cortex. I'm gonna throw some wings on here and I'm gonna show you what a properly set up Cortex should do with your flight services.